Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you in this first lecture in the Swayam MOOCs series of lectures on Japanese language and culture. I am Vatsala Misra and I have been with the foreign language program of IIT Kanpur for the past 25 years. I learnt my Japanese in Japan long back and I will share some of my experiences with you during the lectures. We will do a lot of details regarding language, regarding uh, the scripts, regarding expressions. But let me tell you one thing that uh, this language is very closely related to culture, to the mannerisms, to the lifestyle of the people, to expressions, to phrases. And uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult to give an equivalent of a certain phrase in Japanese or a certain situation in Japanese in English. And you will see some of it in, uh, during the course also. We will try to get a glimpse of some of these facets during the 12 weeks that we are going to be together. I will be uploading assignments and lectures for you every week and will of course interact with you through the forum as well. So now let us make the most of this opportunity that we have and learn this wonderful language, this very, very interesting language, Japanese, one of the few in the world which uses an ideographic script. In other words, I would say that it uses ideograms and pictograms or pictures which have meanings to represent objects and thoughts, which is quite a different and a difficult concept for a lot of people and especially for us Indians. As you can see, it is perhaps the use of these ideograms that make it necessary for the language to use other scripts to supplement the kanji or the ideograms or the pictograms. Whereas the pictograms and ideograms or kanjis as they are called can have multiple readings and also there can be many kanjis with the same readings. Of course, we are going to do all of this later in our class. The two scripts, the phonetic scripts, the hiragana and the katakana scripts are quite similar to Devanagari as they are phonetic in nature. It is because of this complexity in the writing and the reading of the Japanese language that I personally have chosen this Roman script in this course and will be using the Roman script more than the hiragana and the katakana. Of course, we will do hiragana and katakana as well. See, for example, if I want to write, say, Japan in kanji, then I would write like this, ni hon. Okay. If I want to write the same thing in hiragana, I would write ni hon. And now, again, if I want to write the same thing in Roman, it would be ni hon which makes it very easy for us to read in the beginning. And we can concentrate on the spoken language more. Of course, a lot of you would want to appear for JLPT. I understand that. But for that, you will have to do the script on your own. It is not that I will not do the script here. Of course, we will do the script as we go along. But you have to practice the script at home. As I told you earlier, we will cover all the three scripts in the course and all the kanjis that are there for JLPT N5. So as a script is after all an integral part of the language, let us start our first class today with an introduction to the scripts and the numbers. So well, there are three scripts in the language. We have, as you can see over here, we have Hiragana, Katakana and Kanji. So these are the th 
three scripts. The hiragana and the katakana are called the kana scripts in Japanese and kanji is the ideograms and the pictograms. We will discuss kanji of course, in detail later as well, but first we should talk about hiragana and katakana. Now, it is interesting that till the 4th century AD, the Japanese did not have a script and they had a language, they had a language, they could talk freely, but there was no script. So, now if you do not have a script, well you cannot document anything, you cannot write anything. So, as traveling increased and as people started coming to Japan, trade was happening. So, through trade and through people coming into Japan from China and Korea, lot of pictograms from China entered Japan. They realized that this was some kind of a script which they could use for documenting and slowly over period of time with the help of these pictograms which entered Japan at that time via trade, hiragana came into being. They developed this new script which was called hiragana. Hiragana is a script which is used for Japanese words, words of Japanese origin belonging to Japan. And then with trade with people coming in with Japanese people going out probably to Korea or to China, foreign words also entered into Japan. Foreign words slowly came and they were being used in the language. So, now there was a problem as to how to write those foreign words. From this, from these pictograms, from these pictograms and ideograms which were already there, katakana was developed for foreign words. So, the difference between hiragana and katakana, the basic difference is that hiragana is for words of Japanese origin and katakana is for words of Chinese or foreign, that time Chinese and now of course, foreign origin. Also, because kanji came first, the pictograms came first to Japan, the ladies were not allowed or could not get access to these kanji characters and they were not allowed to write. Slowly over period of time, when hiragana was developed, the ladies got the script of hiragana and they started writing in hiragana. And thus this, you will notice that this script, when I show you the script, you will see that it is very cursive, it is round, it is circular, whereas katakana is very angular. We will discuss of course, these Chinese characters later also. For the time being, these are just pictograms and ideograms, meaning pictures and ideas shown depicted in line form. For example, sun, when, when someone says make sun, what do you do? This is exactly what you draw and automatically anybody would say that this is sun. Now, what does the sun do? The sun divides day and night into a day into two parts, which is day and night. So, well, if you want to show this in lines, this is how it is going to come, it is going to divide like this. So, it is to be a square and it will be divided in this form, in this manner like this. So, when you look at, when a Chinese or a Japanese would look at this character, immediately the picture that comes to their mind is of sun. Now, after the course, when you look at 
this picture all the time, you will think of the sun or something to do with light, something to do with brightness, something to do with day or date. So, these are the things that will come to your mind. This is how these pictograms and ideograms have come into being. A certain idea, a certain picture that forms in your mind when you look at something is shown or depicted like this in form of straight horizontal and vertical lines. So, well, we will go ahead now and see what hiragana and katakana are. Well, the kana scripts are phonetic scripts, they are symbols, phonetic symbols, whatever you say, you write. So, hiragana has 46 basic symbols and so has katakana, also 46 basic symbols. Now, there is a second set also of both the scripts, for both the scripts. The second set has 25 characters each and the interesting part is that the second set is made from the first set by using just two symbols like this and this. These two symbols are used in the first set and another second set of 25 symbols is made. So, this is the kana script of course, when you see you will know. You can see the stroke order, stroke order means how the character is made, what is to be drawn first and what comes after that and what follows later. Well, you have this set, the first set of 46 symbols of hiragana right in front of you over here and you can see the first line is the vowel line. The vowels are here, I will read them out to you once. Then we have the k sound or the k sound, s or s sound, t or t sound, n or n sound, h or h sound, m or m sound, y or y sound, r or r sound and then we have this w over here, n over here and o over here. These two are given of course, in the olden script, but now these are not in use anymore. First, let us do the vowels. Well, the vowels are, you can repeat after me, a, e, u, a, o. Once again, a, e, u, a, o. Then we have the k series and you have to join this k with the vowel here, which makes it ka, ki, ku, k and ko. And in a similar manner for the s series, sa, shi, su, se and then so. You will notice over here that this is a little different. The sound is not C, but it is she. This is an exception. Please keep that in mind. Then we have the the series and again in a similar manner ta, chi, tsu, te, to. Chi and tsu again are a little different. These are also exceptions. So, you need to remember these three exceptions, shi, chi and tsu. Then we have the n series 
and again in a similar manner na, ni, nu, ne and no. And then the H series ha, he, who, he and ho. And then the ma series or the m series ma, me, mu, me, mo. Now, you will notice something over here that all these consonants all these k, s, t, n, h, m so far are joining with vowels here and then the sound is there, then the syllable is made. So, in Japanese please remember all syllables will always have a vowel in the end, no syllable is complete without a vowel except for one and we are going to do this very soon. Well, then we come to the Y series ya, you, yo. R series ra, ri, ru, re, ro. Then we have wa, you can leave these two out, o and m. Now, as I told you just now, this is the only one which does not end in a vowel. You will say how will we use this? Well, I will give you a word very simple. How would you say orange in Japanese? Well, it is orange. So, the ng sound in orange is this alphabet over here. Then, if you take the word in Japanese, it is mikan for orange. So, well, mi, ka, m. Again, you see this m sound. That is how it is going to be used and you will notice for all of them that they all end in vowels. The stroke order is given very clearly over here and of course, you can go on the net and see hiragana and katakana and different ways of writing hiragana and katakana. Well, this is very clearly given in different colors for you to remember. The exceptions are also given over here and you can revise it and do it at home. Now, you will see that katakana though the pronunciation is the same, writing system is given over here, but you will notice that it is very, very angular unlike hiragana. I will show you the slide once again can see how cursive and round it is and then katakana over here extremely masculine very very angular. So, well it is the same a e u a o ka ki ku ke ko sa shi su se so ta chi tsu te to na ni nu ne no ha hi hu he ho ma mi mu me mo ya, you and yo. Well, the these two are missing in both hiragana and katakana because it is very similar to this sound. So, thus it has been left out. Then you have ra, ri, ru, re, ro, wa, o and m. Now, this o and this o for both hiragana and katakana have a different meaning. This is a vowel and this is used as a particle in the language. Now, we will talk about particles also, but a little later for the time being you could just keep it in mind that o over here is used as a particle and not this o 
but the O in Hiragana. Please remember that. Hiragana are used for words of Japanese origin and also to change tenses of verbs and to show different verb forms. Hiragana is used and katakana of course is for foreign words. Well, this is katakana for you. You can see very clearly again in different colors, easy to memorize. So, you can do this. Now, as I was telling you, kanjis are ideograms and pictograms. Each character has a meaning. Each symbol as you can see over here, this symbol has a meaning and each character has minimum two readings, one a Chinese reading and another one a Japanese reading. So, please as can be seen each character has a meaning and a reading of its own. There are specific ways of writing and one has to memorize the stroke order which is how the strokes are to be made in kanji it is extremely extremely important to memorize and learn the stroke order because the stroke order for a character is fixed that does not change and there is a reason because you need to go to the next character or word so it has to end over here one and it has to start from here like this you cannot start a character from here and maybe go here and do something like this. No, there is a specific set order to write kanji characters, pictograms. Well, now what are kanji characters? What are pictograms? As I just told you about Nichi. So, when you look at this now, I think you will think of the sun. How would you show a man in line? Man in lines. Well, this is how a man looks. When you want to talk about someone, you say okay, this person over here, but you cannot make this picture all the time and write about man and say this is what is man. Okay. So, what will you do? Well, just remove the head from here, just make it like this. When you look at this picture now, what does it look like? does not it remind you of a man? Well, you can see now, see when you make this you know it is a man. So, in Japanese or in Chinese in pictograms when you write this character it tells you that it is a man you are talking about someone. Well, if you if you if you look at this what do you think it is? It is water, is not it? It looks like a river flowing. So, well, it is going to be made like this. If you look at fire, how will you show fire in, in uh, a character? How will you show it in lines? Well, this is how fire looks like. You have the logs over here, you have wood over here, and when it burns, well, this is what it looks like. Now, how will you show it in picture form or in line form? Simple like this, this and make it like this. So, simple like this, this and this. So, when you look at this, you will know we are talking about fire. This is what pictograms are all about. Of course, these are very simple pictograms. These are not difficult pictograms. You can relate to them. You can you can understand these very clearly. It only gets complicated when it becomes a little abstract. We will do all of that later. As I told you, this is hito. This is hito. Now, what does this look like? This looks like a mouth, an opening, is not it? So, if you join these two characters, means population. So, many mouths, so many people, so many mouths to feed and what is that? That is population. So, well that is how you would think of
kanji characters. There is one more very simple, you have done this one over here, this means fire and what is a volcano? Volcano throws fire. A mountain is like this. You can see with the base over here, this looks like a mountain. So, well, if you have this and this, automatically even if you do not know the word, you know that this is a mountain which throws fire. So, it is a volcano. So, that is how these kanji characters have come into being and that is how you write them, that is how you show them and you understand. Now, Japanese is written horizontally and vertically as well. You can see horizontally, you can see it is written over here and vertically, you can see how it is written. You can also write like this, but it starts from the right side, please remember not from left side. That is very, very important, but when you write horizontally, it starts from the left side. Also, you will notice something else over here. There are no spaces at all and kanji characters, hiragana characters are all used simultaneously together. And of course, you can see there is this katakana also used over here. So, in the language, all three scripts are used simultaneously, which was not happening earlier. Earlier, for a long, long time, the Japanese continued to write in either kanji, katakana or hiragana. But now, as you can see very clearly in this slide, all three are used together. Now, as I told you, there are no spaces. Something is written over here in Japanese and something is written over here. We are used to space in between words, but the Japanese have no problem at all in reading this. Why? Because you have kanji pictogram, you have the hiragana in blue and then in orange you have katakana. So, without even spacing, it is very, very clear. Now, we will do the vowels very quickly and give you some vocabulary. You can repeat after me. The meanings are given over here in black. I will not read out the meanings. I will just read out what is written in hiragana and of course, in Roman it is given over here. You can read this as well. This is the vowel series a, e, u, a and o. As I told you, a for apple, b for bat is what we are going to do here. So, well, ahiru, ari, isu, inu, ushi, uchi, ebi, eki, origami, om. So, you can repeat all these again and again and I am sure you will feel comfortable very soon. There is more, you can repeat after me, ashi, ase, Ishi, Ito, Usagi, Ue, Uta, Eki, Eda, Oni, Okashi, Otera. So, all the meanings are given very clearly. You can Learn these. Then we have the ka series. You can see the sound ka series. Kani, kasa, kirin, kimono, kusa, kutsu. 
keki. Now, this is a foreign word, thus it is written in katakana, cake and also kohi, long sound ko and he, kohi, coffee and koara, cola bear, ko a ra, koara, cola bear and you will notice that we do not have l in Japanese, all L's are supposed to be pronounced as ra sounds. So, all the meanings are given very clearly, you can learn these. Then vocabulary for the K series, kaban, kagi, ki, Kitsune, Kuchi, Kudamono, Kushi, Keiki, Keitai, Keshigomu, Kodomo, Kocha. So, well, the meanings are again given. It is given in Roman as well, so you can read all of it and learn it. Now, we have the Sa series and in the Sa series you already know the she is an exception. So, well, Sakana, Saru, Shika, Shima Uma, Suzume. Suika, Semi, Sebiro, Sora, Soba. So, this is the Sa series for you. The She, of course, is different. Please try to pronounce the She. It is She as in the English S H E, She, but over here the syllable is S H I. Some words again, Sake, Sara, Same, Shichi, Shingo, Sumo, Sushi, Senaka, Seta is a sweater and the sound is a little long. And in the end we have Sura. So, why I have given this vocabulary like this to you is for you to make sentences, for you to speak loudly and one thing very important over here is that you should speak loudly, so that it is heard by you and you can understand where you are fumbling or going wrong. Now, for your first lesson there are a lot of things, but well we should do the numbers. So, well very very quickly, Ichi, Ni, San, Yon, Go, Roku, Nana, Hachi, Q, Ju. It is a long sound, so please practice this, so that you are comfortable when we do something new in our next class. There is a small expression, in fact there are two, there is Ohayo gozaimasu with a rising intonation here meaning good morning. So, anytime you meet someone from 6 in the morning till 10 o'clock, well you can say ohayo gozaimasu very freely and also if you are very very informal with the person, ohayo will suffice. And then you have konnichiwa which means good day and you can use it from 10 o'clock onwards 
till 5 or 6 in the evening, just before dark. Konnichiwa and Ohayo gozaimasu. So, it is Ohayo gozaimasu and Konnichiwa. Well, practice these expressions. We will be doing more of these in our classes later. Today has been a little long for you. Well, with this I would like to end. Thank you very much and mata aimasho. And this phrase that I am using, I will explain to you tomorrow. So, minasan mata ashita aimasho. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you.